everyone and welcome back to another video and today we are looking at a scenario where Germany had where the Allies did not use a strategy of appeasement against the Germans right before World War II, but instead hammered down the stipulations of Versailles and did not allow the Germans to even retake the Saarland. Let's go ahead and begin with an immediate war. Germany, who was quite obviously not allowed to take over the Saarland by the French, instead decides to stage a full-on rebellion in the region, which swiftly takes control. Along with that, they send their military into the Rhineland, which, although the British are still skeptical about joining, does cause French entry into the war. The Germans quickly fully annex these territories of the Rhine and the Saarland into a basically normal lands, not treating them any differently than how they would treat a northern state or a southern German state. The French would have the immediate advantage as the Germans were very, very limited in what they could do at this point. They had been slowly militarizing, but that was entirely in secret, and there really was not that large of a German army. In numbers, the French would have a slight advantage, even if so, just barely. And in equipment, the French would have by far the largest advantage, as the Germans were unable to buy weapons or to heavily increase military production, seeing as, once again, they were not supposed to. They do, however, begin a small attack along Alsace. This goes horribly, and the French soon push them all the way back to the border. They then continue their push into the Rhine, capturing the lower Rhine areas, and offering peace settlement to Germany, in which the German economy goes bye bye and the French are secured practically full influence over the nation. The Germans deny that, and instead continue to militarize even faster, managing to push the French back significantly. They then basically rig an election in Austria to annex the nation and use Austrian manpower and goods against the French. This, however, will cause a very interesting thing to happen. That is that despite what you may assume, Italy is actually going to be joining this war on their own side against the Germans. Maybe not what you'd expect, but it somewhat makes sense. They were guaranteeing the Austrians, and without them getting good relations with uh, the Germans against the Allies, seeing as they have <coughs> forgot to draw it in, but they have not yet taking, taken over Ethiopia. They will instead use this opportunity to take over Ethiopia and swiftly push in and capture most of Austria. In the meantime, the French would recapture the rest of Alsace and push back into the entirety of the Southern Rhine region. The Germans who were actually doing fairly well, quickly militarizing and trying to fix themselves from the previous war at this time, are now getting absolutely destroyed. Even the one thing that they hoped would save them is going to make things even worse. The Germans in the Sudetenland of Czechoslovakia are going to rebel against, well, the Czechoslovak uh, government and join Germany. In a way, this is going to pull in Czechoslovakia against them as well. Italy will begin an invasion from the south, whilst continuing to push into Austria, very, very significantly managing to capture practically the entire nation, or at least what was the nation. They then push up and capture the city of Munich, although by now they are fully stopped and are actually pushed back quite a bit into Austria by German forces. You know, Germany is by far overextending themselves. The Czechs are pushing back and pushing back fairly hard. The Hungarians take advantage of the situation to seize southern Slovakia, although they do not join in more formally than that. The French also see that the Germans are getting completely overextended and continue their push in, as by now the Germans are doing complete acts of insanity to attempt to win this war. Their main goal is to kick Italy out, as they know the French will not fall, but the Italians just might. They continue to push into Austria, recapturing Vienna and Graz, 
cutting off Italian forces into multiple pieces and crushing the entire Italian military. Despite the fact that the Germans aren't doing well, they have somehow managed to destroy Italy. And Italy is now starting to find any way that they can sue for peace with the Germans. The French, seeing this, continue to ramp up their assault into the Rhine region, managing to capture many important cities in the northern Rhine, although by now they have been fully stopped. And the Germans are actually making fairly good progress into Czechia, managing to capture Prague and Brno all within a couple days. From there, Bratislava Falls and Czechoslovakia is but a fragment of the state they were just a couple of weeks ago. The Italians also managed to set up their own piece, in which they gained a small bit of land in southern Austria, and a decent amount of money from the Germans. Along with that, they also gained a small demilitarized strip along the border with Germany to secure Italian protection, and that Italian gains will not be harmed in the future. With this, Germany is now able to focus even more troops onto the French border, and by now, they have also managed to fully capitulate Czechoslovakia. This is going far better than you might have expected. But in the end, by now, Italy is even choosing to send aid to the Germans, who they were fighting just a few months ago, and who they had just signed a peace treaty with for, well, at least hopefully, a long peace. The Germans are now pushing the French back, and they are getting incredibly cocky. They decide that pushing all the way back into the Rhine will take a decent amount of time, but pushing the French out of Alsace and pushing through all the way to Paris, which they know they need if they want to capitulate the French, is just going to take too long. So instead, they choose to do what they did in our timeline, what they always do, and invade through the Benelux in hopes of getting around French defenses. This initially goes very well, as they manage to capture all of the Netherlands and start to steam on to Belgium. But they are actually stopped. They have reached northern France, but they are unable to push any further. And although they use this as an opportunity to push back the French in the Rhineland, it is not enough and a full stalemate is made across the border. Along with this, the British are showing large signs of joining this war on the French side to support them against the German threat. The, the Polish are also a fierce German enemy in this case, but the Germans are not so crazy as to think they could handle a two-front war against Poland as well as France. However, they do believe they can take on the small state of Denmark. This, although may not seem very large, is going to be a part of their downfall. At this point, Britain is fully on the French side and sends them an absurd amount of aid. They have now been cut off from the Baltic, and Germany actually makes a form of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, where they agree to split Poland with the USSR. With this division of Poland now being set up, the Germans invade the Polish nation. They swiftly manage to push into all of Western Poland, whilst the USSR begins to push into the east. This is looking like it is going to be the same as in our world, except Britain is not in. However, very, very soon Britain will join, and this is going to be absolutely horrible for Germany. <coughs> As the biggest difference, or at least what I think is one of the biggest differences, is in our world they had years to prepare before the British were able to fully blockade them from the rest of the world. They had stockpiles of arms, they had plenty of soldiers lined up to join the ranks, and they had an Italian ally who was willing to help them. Italy is on their side now, even sending some volunteer forces, but it is not looking likely they will fully join into the war. At this point, though, the one good thing that has happened is that Poland has fallen, and although there's not an official peace treaty, the USSR and Germany have split it right around the middle. The Germans, now seeing this British entry as a massive threat, decide that it is their final chance to capitulate France. They make a massive push around the border, may not look very large, but this is by far the bloodiest campaign yet. They further push back the French in their own territories, leaving the French with very little gains. 
and pushed further and further into northern France until they were eventually stopped, British troops arrived, and it is looking like a repeat of World War I. Except this time Germany is occupying many territories, and they are, as I said, running out of guns on all fronts. The Italians are doing their best to supply them, but Italy, who has fully invaded Ethiopia at this point, is now embargoed by the Western countries as well, and the UK cuts off Gibraltar and the Suez, so the Italians are practically on their own as well. The Germans are slowly being pushed back in northern France, whilst in Poland, the Polish resistance begins up in Warsaw as well, coordinating with the Czech one to attempt to overthrow their German oppressors. Germany is also running out of many materials. They are importing from Sweden, but even while controlling Denmark, Norway is still being an absolute pain. Instead of directly invading the nation, they support a fascist coup near Oslo, and intentionally or not, this brings Norway fully into the conflict. If you haven't noticed, I'm trying to make this resemble our world, at least as close as I can. The Germans are going to attempt to supply these Norwegian rebels, even sending some of their own troops. But in the end, they only manage to capture the southern regions as they are stopped in the Norwegian mountains and forests, where they most definitely do not have the advantage, and seeing as the British blockade is still in full force, and most German divisions here are not getting any supplies from the mainland, only from locals who are getting all of their stuff basically stolen from them, the Germans are actually getting pushed back on the Norwegian front. This is looking worse and worse. Sweden declares full neutrality and actually starts to support the Western nations, embargoing the Germans, destroying a large resource supplier for, for Germany. At this point, the Baltics have been invaded by the USSR. The Finno-Soviet War, the Winter War, has by now happened. I'm going to be ignoring all of this, as it does not matter. In our world, I would have probably mapped this out, because depending on how well the Russians do, it could decide how well the Germans do against the Russians in the future. But here there will no, not be any Russian conflicts. Romania has declared neutrality, not aligning with the Germans in the slightest, and France even still controls some small territories along the border. This is a disaster. The French are pushing back. Oh. The French are pushing back, even managing to capture parts of southern Belgium, and the Germans are absolutely starving. The Allies know, though, that they do have to do something if they want to win this, otherwise, it will be a completely drawn out war. They are by now getting very heavy supplies from the Americans. I'm not mapping out the African Front. Since Germany does not have any colonies at all, it would all be Allied control. We can ignore that entirely. If the Italians were in, maybe we couldn't. But the Italians aren't really looking to join this war, with Ger which Germany is losing. And if they did join this war, the British would fully cut them off instead of just cutting off arms export imports. Meaning the Italian nation would starve, and they would most likely capitulate fairly quickly. As a Italian pro-Western Union is already trying to fight them against the fascists. The French are continuing to push up into Belgium, whilst in the meantime pushing further into Germany, hoping that an invasion of Germany will cause the Germans to fully give up and capitulate. The Germans will not do this though until Czech and Polish resistance officially rebels against their German oppressors, managing to immediately take control of many lands that Germany thought to be fully under their control. This is now a two-front war, actually a many-front war in Norway, in the Benelux, and in Czechoslovakia and Poland. It's not going to get very much better, as Switzerland, although still being neutral, refuses to aid the Germans in any way, because they see no point to it if Germany is going to capitulate in a few years anyway. Hungary, who in our world joined the Germans, is now not joining any side, said once again choosing neutrality, despite the fact that they would probably side have sided with the Germans if the Germans had done better. The Czechoslovak and Polish resistance has now con is now in control of a good portion of their nations. The USSR, who is actually more 
German leaning than Western leaning is not eating these polls, but they are still doing fairly well considering their circumstances. And France is continuing to push up the Nile whilst liberating more and more of the Netherlands and Belgium. Let me set that down as well. At this point, Amsterdam has been recaptured, and the British are planning the D-Day of our world, which will not be happening in northern France, obviously. Instead, it will be the invasion of Hamburg and surrounding territories. This will now be the largest naval invasion in history. The Germans have been kicked out of Norway, and the British are quickly going to move to secure control of northern Germany and Denmark, which is going to go incredibly well. They are going to continue to push down south until they are eventually stopped by quickly made German resistance. Although the Germans at this point know they cannot win, they have lost Prague and Bratislava. Even the Poles are nearing their own coastline, and Konigsberg has lost some lands in the south to a Polish resistance, not even a nation. The Germans are capitulating, everyone knows it. The French seized must much of the Rhineland, which has not had additional years to pledge full loyalty to the Germans. The Netherlands is fully re well, I guess reoccupied, and northern Germany is occupied as a whole. At this point, even the Czechs and the Polish are seeing mass success along the border, as they begin an invasion into Silesia. The Allies start to look for alternate methods, and, well, they see one major strategy. Capture Berlin, capture Frankfurt, and that may just be enough to cause a German surrender. Frankfurt is by far the easiest of these two, as they move in and secure influence over the rest of northern Germany. They then squeeze along the coast as they now have full control of the Baltic as well as the northern seas, allowing them to get easy supply and to bombard the German coastline until it either joins them or dies. The Poles are also doing far better now, as they do not have to worry about supply issues, they have reached the coast and Allied aid is flooding in. And I mean flooding. The British are sending mass amounts of troops to Poland, and even the French are sending some of their own, despite their enlarged front line. Now the Allies begin the long march towards Berlin. It is possible the Soviets might join in and try and see some lands, especially over here in Konigsberg, but at this point it would be too late. It is clear who the victor is going to be. And with the fall of Berlin, there's no point in even mapping out the rest of this. The Allies would have to capture more territories. I doubt the Germans would surrender easy. But given a bit more time, the Germans would surrender and a peace treaty would be carved up. In which the French, who didn't gain anything besides some colonial territories, I guess, is going to gain a small amount of territory in the Sauerland, which they directly annex instead of just occupying. They are also going to occupy the southern Rhine region. You know, the Dutch are going to get a small tidbit of land. Actually, nah, let's just give them a bit of the north here. Because why not? The Germans are also going to be losing all of Silesia, where a small bit is going to be given to the Czechoslovaks, but the majority is going to be given to the Poles. The Polish are also going to seize most of Konigsberg, as the Soviets take a small portion of the east. But that is really not a big deal. They did not take the city of Konigsberg itself, and it is really not worth it enough to fight the Soviets at all for that small piece of land. The Soviets have to, and the Poles would also come to an official peace agreement, as it is a f okayly fair peace treaty, I guess. The Soviets are definitely the ones who benefited from this. The Polish are not very happy, as they even had to give up some Polish majority of lands, but they don't really get much of a choice here. Just got out of a massive brutal war, and their economy is absolutely gone. Soviets are going to fully annex all these eastern territories, and although maybe not too near in the future, seeing as this has delayed the creation of the nuclear bomb, and it has also caused some other major effects. Without France capitulating and losing a lot of strength in this conflict, it is possible that the British and French colonial empires, obviously not forever, but for a much larger period of time, exist. 
they might even be able to pull off some kind of federation if they're if the people in power agree. If not, then well, obviously they won't. But if they get lucky enough to get some people in power to agree, there's a chance their empires survive at least a decent amount longer. We also see that American influence in this world is crushed. In our world, they had mass economic influence over all of Western Europe, as the region could not really survive without them. The Americans were giving them guns, money, just about everything you could imagine. Meanwhile, Western Europe was contributing far less as they were in the middle of a war, and even after that, they were recovering from a war. The Soviets are going to be in a significantly weaker position, but they are still going to be expanding themselves, possibly going to try and secure influence over the Balkans or the Bosphorus. I do not really know exactly what's going to happen after this, but I do hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.